Oh my god! Just like that. Oh. Yeah. Live. Okay. This is live. Well, no, not live. Oh, We're god. alive. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, can. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with the intro. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks. Hello. Can you edit this, please? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Brett TV Podcast. I'm Brett TV and I'm here with the guys from IFHT, the two co-founders, Matt Dennis and Jason Lucas. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Very good. I just did a podcast with them. I was number, what number was I? Number four? Four. 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 Number four. Yeah. And so watch for them. Um, On our unreleased podcast. Unreleased Currently, podcast, yeah. 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 It's like, you heard it here first. We got another exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> um... Now, if you don't know IFHT, you've been under a rock if you're in the mountain bike world. And if you're not in the mountain bike world, they are a Vancouver-based production company um, that is known for their comedy and action sports videos with over 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Uh, Somebody read our website. Right? <laughs> yeah, <before. laughs> Read it right now. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> and um, they've done a bunch of very wild, successful videos like the uh, How to Be series. How to be a mountain biker, how to be a movie producer, or film producer, video Filmmaker, producer, how so to be on. a high schooler, how to do all these different things. Wow, this is a little very funny. Um, as well, you guys have done a bunch of um, uh, commercials for some big clients like Trek, Bond Tracker, CBC, Scott, Red Bull, Can- uh, Canada Dale, Rocky Mountain Bicycles, GT, MEC, SRAM, Pit Viper, Beneath, Evoc, etc. The list goes on. He's done the research. Yeah, I feel like I'm listening to your sponsor list. <laughs> right, I know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> a little glint off the teeth. <laughs> um, as well as uh, you guys have won a bunch of contests like uh, Dirt Diaries. Um, I remember one of my favorite ones was... Uh, the sickest edit ever, <laughs> which was really funny. We're and going uh, raw. you guys uh, beat me that year, and then uh, <laughs> oh sorry, oh wait, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> still thinking about that. Got one, huh? second place, yeah, and then uh, for the girls, uh, beat us again. Ooh. You guys were like kicking, kicking ass. Um, and then uh, you, you did win the. the year we worked that we together didn't, for what? a slideshow. You no, know, I won the last. You time. won, yeah, the year uh, that we didn't. Yeah, enter, you, you finally with, snagged um, it. Uh, Fast Focus. <laughs> yeah, Dean that was Bergez. awesome. Yes, yeah, that it was. was good. Awesome. I, well, thank you very much. I might, I might agree with you. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, but a super fun contest at Crankworks Whistler, and um, it's like what a three minute video or four minute video or something like six that. Minutes. Six, that minute six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes max. Yeah. Six minutes max. Okay, yeah. and. Um, you know, they've done a bunch of cool stuff that's like, uh, you know, satirical music videos to irreverent mountain bike content. And I think in your exact words from the website. Yes. And it exactly nails it. You guys uh, are funny. <laughs> and you guys got get some good action too. So um, thanks for the, all the entertainment over the years. Yeah. Thanks for being a part of it. Yeah, you've yeah. been a part of it. I was thinking about it yesterday after our podcast. Like, it's been a long time that you've been just making cameos in our stuff. and For sure, for yeah. sure. Like, one of I my... appreciate that mentorship, you know, as a young filmmaker. You, yes. You working with us, being patient. And... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Young punks, you know. Yeah. Come on, come on, guys. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys started in 2009. Um, you started IFHD in 2009, was it not? Yeah. That yes. Was, uh, yeah. I thought that was a skill testing. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Halfway through 2009? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That was our first upload to Facebook. Yeah. Oh, wow. With the... With I fucking hate that. Yeah. IFHD stands. Oh, I thought I was, I, I'd fucking hit that. No, I fucking hate that. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah. It's all about stuff we hated. <laughs> oh, Isn't no that such way. a great concept? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, I, I, she does everything. <laughs> oh. Well, where's the door again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no negativity around here. Oh, no, that's funny. And so what kind of things did you hate right away? What was it? The tooth, the toothbrush tragedy was the first one. Yeah, that was a really dumb thing. That, that was, was dumb, that I was know. my pet peeve. That I, I, it hasn't happened so much anymore. Maybe it's because I have an electric toothbrush. But There's when manual t- m- toothbrushes, I, I was, I'm gonna, I yeah, can't I do, do that. that. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that hand motion. You know. What oh you yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm brushing my teeth, you know what that looks like. Cue the porno music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put the bass on it. Boom, 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 boom. Um. Yeah, when you're brushing your teeth too aggressively, the toothbrush flies out of your mouth and scrapes along your cheek. I don't know if this ever happened to you. I don't know. I got fake teeth. Yeah, you brush your teeth? Yeah. Well, I I, I guess I don't have to probably, but I still do. <laughs> <laughs> probably for the best. <laughs> toothbrush flies out of your mouth, hits your face. I don't know. Sometimes it would, I would, it would happen to me. And then that was the first topic of our first IFHT video ever. I see. What, yeah. Did you have like a soft brush or a stiff brush? Uh, medium. Medium. Yeah. And it still happened. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's something to do with, so, <laughs> something to do with my like kind of high energy nature. Like I just like I'm brushing too fast trying to get over with. You <laughs> yeah, know? I'm not like, that motion either. Actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Someone can get that really quick. Yeah, right. I, I feel like you have a joke where the punchline is like that's the punchline. Of, I do know? actually. Yeah. yeah, I can't say it on air though. <laughs> I'll tell you after. <laughs> I'm going to laugh to myself because it's really funny. <laughs> yeah. I can't do this on air, though. <laughs> You're going to laugh like this, too. I <laughs> can't wait. Okay. So how did you guys meet each other? And tell us your, your bike mountain biking background. First of all, the classic question here is what was your first bike? What was your first bike? What was your first bike? Uh, my first bike was a Sport Tech. I think it was purple, 24-inch wheels. Uh, it was a girl's bike. Um, My first bike was a girl's I bike. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I know. It was from Toys R Us. And uh, I think back where we grew up in Richmond, uh, street riding was still a big thing. I Richmond, know, BC. Richmond, British Columbia. And I took it off a four foot drop and folded like both the wheels, the <laughs> handlebar, like everything exploded. And then. Sounds like me in 83. <laughs> I was, but I was like, that's amazing. Like that, this was super awesome. So I, I went out and bought a legit, or I think I went out and got a job and then bought a legit, uh, Norco Sasquatch hardtail. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And that was probably indestructible. It was, yeah. It, I, I think the frame is still around somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I, you? I, I had a hammy down for my older brother and, uh, I forgot the name of this bike for years until last night when it finally came to my mind. It, it, Beth. <laughs> no, Projectile Junior was the name of this bike. And That's it was it. like a tech. It was not the name. That was the name, Projectile Junior. That's what Junior. you called it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you imagine if you did that? Projectile Junior. Martha, let's buy that for our son. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know where that bike came from. Like, I don't know how my, my brother uh, acquired it. But that, that was my first bike. And then first, like, real, like, I think that was what I learned to ride two wheels on. And then my first mountain bike was a Kuna. Kona Hula. Kona Hula. Yeah. Yeah. And I broke the top tube on that one on the dirt jumps in Richmond. Okay. Okay. Uh. Yeah, that'll <laughs> happen. Actually, I, I actually hit up Kona for a sponsorship before I got signed with Rocky Mountain. As one of the, one of the first, as the first professional free ride team with Simmons and Schley. And I hit up Dick Cox and, yep. at Kona. And I sent him some videos and some photos. And he'd never seen anything like that before. And he goes, I don't want to sponsor you. You're just going to break my bike on <laughs> camera there's no way <laughs> yeah that was a sad day when i broke that bike uh yeah, you know bet. my dad bought it for me so i was very happy and but it actually i guess it equaled pretty good results because eventually he bought me a uh, stinky junior which was like a life-changing oh, bike for me right. Stinky was yeah legendary. yeah that was like now up in the world man I, I remember so vividly giving him a hug once he when he gave me that bike i think i like came back or school ended early or something and he had a surprise for me in the kitchen and uh it was uh it was a spanking. No, it was a bike. <laughs> no, it was a stinky. No, it was a stinky, not a music again. Not a stinky junior. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my. But yeah, yeah. So how did you guys get, like, riding off-road um, if you're in Richmond? Do, were you hitting, like, was there some, like... Um... There was a dirt jump park. There was a skate park. Okay. So that was kind of the... Did conduit. you guys know each other at this time? Or no, how old were you when really. you found that? No. 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 But you are just happy to both be in Richmond. Exactly. Yeah. The Richmond actually. I lived had... in Richmond as a child too. No, I... really? Yeah. Where? Uh, I don't know exactly where, but I lived in like Burnaby, Richmond, New West, a bunch of different places before I was four. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know so, that. Yeah. For a year, we lived in Richmond. I need you to find out your exact address. Yeah. yeah so exactly. No, I'll go back. <laughs> I'm sure, it's a condo now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, what was the question? <laughs> like, how did you guys oh. get mountain biking coming from Richmond? Which right. is like, for people that aren't from the Lower Mainland in Vancouver here, it's kind of flat. And um, yeah, super flat. Very low. It's actually below sea level. It's below sea level. Well, Jason grew up in Steveson, which is like the cool kid part of Richmond. And all the cool kids had mountain bikes and the dirt jumps were nearby. So I think Jason kind of got swept up in the cool kid group and he was like, I need to get a mountain bike. So he he was getting air on the dirt jumps. So it wasn't really getting gnarly. I mean, yeah, it's off road, I guess. But yeah, it's off road. Trails, but no, no, I think, yeah, uh, there was a good scene. Like there's a bunch of kids into it. And so kind of that helps obviously if you have friends to go ride with and then i remember in grade four so i was nine maybe ten nine or ten our gym teacher took us to the watershed which is uh, like a riding spot the the gravity the gravity the the gravity bowl step up and i i rode the gravity bowl and i was like that's crazy this is insane and like because our gym teacher was an avid mountain biker he took a bunch of us that were into it and did, did, I did the gravity bowl. We did the jump trail. What year was that? That would have been like 
five. Oh, wow. 2005. And how, like, you were in high school? No, 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 like, grade four. Grade four. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm old. Yeah. Yeah, I, forgot. I can't believe they let you do that. It Mountain went, biking got ruined for me in it, high school because someone broke their neck on a ski trip. So when I remember I, that. When I got into high school, uh, I was really excited for the mountain bike clubs that my brother was a part of, my yeah. older brother, but then they were no longer a thing because of that accident. But you were lucky. I got in before that, uh, yeah, that accident. Why, well, are you older yeah. than you? No, we're no, the same, same age. age. Same age, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So how did you guys meet each other then? I remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine at the dirt jumps. I think. Yeah, it was at yeah, dirt jumps. Like at the yeah. Richmond dirt jumps. It's just where It was just the thing meets. you did. You ride across Richmond. It's easy to ride. Like that's the benefit of Richmond. There's no hills, right? So it's right. easy to ride your hardtail across town to get to the dirt jumps. Yeah. So mm-hmm. pretty much do that like every day after school. Um, yeah. But I didn't have any ma- bike friends at the time. It was just me and my dad that would bike. Yeah. Or, or my brother. Mostly me and my dad. And then... Uh, yeah, we probably crossed paths count like like a dozen times. Yeah, and then, exactly. Didn't know it. Uh, I don't know. I think I was I was a pretty shy kid, so I probably like and I get to the dirt jumps. So I always be nervous, like that. You're the you know, cool kids. Yeah, he's a cool kid. Right? <laughs> like there was a lot so of cool, cool kids at dirt jumps. Yeah, there. And cool I'm like you know self conscious showing up like. You know, you do a jump and everybody's watching you. It's scary. It's still right. a little scary sometimes dropping scary. in when you got a new set of dirt jumps, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think sooner or later uh, we got into cameras. Jason had a camera and mm. then I had been interested in cameras at that point. And then that kind of brought us together and we're like, oh, like, let's, you want to help? You want to join? Because he was, Jason was making a, a little movie. Yeah. His mm. first little movie with friends. Yeah. When were you guys uh, both like... Um, comedic back then like were you guys class clowns or <laughs> definitely yeah yeah definitely really really shit at school really, annoying. really good at, at comedy yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean myself i was always the kid who would be trying to get the whole class to laugh like yelling blurting shit out like yeah. you know get that little i can little, relate yeah. yeah yeah it's fun though i mean i feel like that's like the early days of kind of developing your comedy is like if you can make like your class laugh or let alone your family laugh. Right, yeah. Like, it's like a, it's a captive audience. <laughs> yeah. And it's always so satisfying. Like, when you make the whole class laugh, you get a rush of adrenaline. You're like, Fuck And you're, like, yeah. running the joke through your head. <laughs> I killed it. I killed, oh, I killed it. it. And yeah. you shower later at night, eight yeah. hours later. Man, that joke's so good. Oh, <laughs> oh the timing, the timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, the fir- that was the first little, like, dopamine way- addiction. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which is way better than thinking of something funny you could have said much later where you're like, why didn't I say that? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's the, worst. the worst. Yeah, I get yeah. it all the time. Speaking of the cool kids uh, in Richmond, I actually had a funny experience where I went out there because I'm not a great dirt jumper. I just, you know, ride steeps and ride trail and stuff. So I went out there with Julian Coffee, mm. hit some dirt jumps in Richmond. Oh, yeah. And we were there hitting like the small ones, then we hit the medium ones, but, you know, we were going to hit the big ones. And some guy showed up and he started throwing his armor on over top of his jeans. And we're kind of like looking at each other, kind of roll our eyes like, Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You know, he's putting his arm around over top of his jeans. What, what year is this? This would have been like about five years ago. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. yeah. oh. and okay. so okay. I, I saw him and he, he didn't have a visor on his helmet. And uh, he rolls down to the jumps and he's lining up for the big ones. And I felt like saying to the guy, like, dude, do you know what you're doing? Like, do, like be careful here. And, you know, just a careful tip, you know, from someone cool who's not obviously cool. <laughs> you know, you should put your armor inside your pants, you know what I mean? And, and <laughs> Keep it in your pants. Yeah, right? Give him a little helpful hand. You know, the guy didn't know. Yeah. But I decided not to. Actually. I think that's when I looked up and I said, Tippy, I know this. I'm try- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try to dress differently. <laughs> right. I think outside the box. <laughs> wait, wait, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the guy drops into the big set and yeah. I look, I didn't have time to tell him anything and, and try and give him a helpful hand. And then he boosts the first one and just cracks out this like, fully flat tabletop and like just kind of like just drags a hand through the air one hand a tabletop is and lands buttery so couldn't hear him land like, and then do the next one and boom nice take turn down and just kind of whips it out and then the next one he does something and like i'm just like look at julie and we're like oh jesus that guy, that guy is really good <laughs> and then you left yeah. Yeah. you look back and the doors were just flapping <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm so glad i didn't say anything he was a pretty cool dude. Well, i'm just wondering why you're at the dirt jumps five years ago in yeah. Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, it might have been six or seven years ago. I don't know. Time's going Fair enough. But but you were at the new bike park then. You would have been at the that new. That was the yeah. distinction yeah. in my head. You yeah, weren't at the was, old one. You were at the Garden There was like a City. concrete bowl there and stuff. And, oh. uh, what? What? Were yeah. you in Richmond, Richmond? Virginia? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. It was just over the bridge from, from New West. 
and uh, Julian took me there. True. This is uh, this is not Richmond. This has got to be Queensboro. Yeah, like, uh, something was it like under that. the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh, that would be Queensboro. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. that was Richmond because you went across the river. It is, but it's not like deep rich. Oh, Almost okay. had a mountain bike legend in Richmond. Yeah, I got yeah, real yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. So close. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you guys hit the dirt jumps and you're catching air and stuff. And then how long did it take for you guys to like come to the North Shore and, and ride some Technar? That's a good question. I feel like you were on the shore like far... You might have been like my introduction to the shore, just going with you and your family and like, and then mm. like riding like Ned's and on Seymour and stuff. You oh, know? Yeah. I mean, ultimately I got into it because of my father, he, he rode road bikes. He did the Ironman triathlons and then he ditched the road bike for a mountain bike. And, uh, and then my brother, who he's six years older than me, he got into mountain biking and then I was the, the annoying, whiny, uh, left out brother who wanted to be a part of the thing. Has he ever been in any of your videos? <laughs> uh, photos. Okay. Uh, he's in, I have some old helmet cam footage of us, of us up at uh, silver star, yeah. but no, he's, he hasn't been on the bike in a while. Oh, okay. Uh, sadly his bike got stolen. Do you run bike thieves? Um, but yeah, I, um, I, I got into riding the shore pretty early through my dad, but I, I had to work my way up to the shore. I think the first, my first exposure to like trails was UBC maybe. And then I moved to SFU, like yeah. Nicole's pole and yeah. the big gear log. jammer or gear jammer. Yeah. Gear there? jammer. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then lower, finally, lower snake. Yeah. Upper lower cut, snake. Uppercut in between <sighs> gear jammer and one. lower snake. It's kind of like a, cut yeah, well, it's throwbacks. Right. Um, yeah. No, they're still there. Yeah. Awesome. Whenever I'm injured, I go ride them. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good place to learn yeah. if you if you live around here. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, and then and then I probably like uh, maybe I don't even think Frome was the next step because they there weren't the easy trails at the bottom at the time. Yeah. So I think it was like after SFU, it was like a hundred laps of CBC. Yeah, yeah. With me and my dad. And you learn quick when you're young. Oh, yeah. And it's you go so rocky. Yeah, it's a super janky trail. It was yeah. so gnarly back then. Like, there yeah. was no blue, green, like, learner trail. Like, in a box. Yeah, well, that right. was the beginner trail. And it's, like, chunky rock. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Four arms are going like this at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, bike parks and stuff. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I think CBC, I, like, I credit that one trail, too. Like, okay. a lot of my skills on the shore these days. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, sooner or later, like, you know, met Jason. We were pretty good friends. And we had mostly just ridden uh, dirt jumps in Richmond. And jumps that i had in my yard as a kid you had jumps in your yard mm -hmm. oh wow and uh and then i invited you out for some shore rides mm -hmm. i walked a lot <laughs> <laughs> it was a good hike for me <laughs> right you discovered a whole new sport well you yeah, had like from biking bikes called dirt jumps hiking or... yeah yeah a little continent well, that's and the it, thing yeah you just ride whatever bike you have so we yeah we had dirt jump bikes right like so one brake one one gear bald tires and you're like yeah, this will be fine. I don't know what <laughs> tread patterns are. I need a front brake for <laughs> It's just added weight. I can't do bar spins. Oh, right. <laughs> I feel like, we're, you know, opposite of that guy who put the shin pads over his clothes, I feel like we were always pretty in tune with like, what we wore. We always, like, yeah. kind of wore ridiculous things. Like, always, like, loud colors, like, like bright flannels or something. I don't know who we were looking up to, but I, we got, we were inspired by uh, some other people, maybe on NSMB forums or Pink Bike or something. But I think it was, like, the the Camacals and the Brandon Seminox as a kid, yeah. like the California kids when they were kind of coming up. And yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, tight jeans. Goldman and stuff. Tight white exactly. pants. Yeah. I never rocked the tight white pants. Our friend did, but. Yeah. No, it was like flannels, <laughs> tight pants, and you're like trying to wedge them over your pads, and you're like, yeah, this is cool. I can't wait to pedal now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, but I'll look good. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I think. But <laughs> there, was, there was like uh, some steps between the dirt jumps and the shore. Like there was actually lot of good riding spots in richmond tons yeah St street of course um lots of great ledges and stuff there's even a drop-in episode at, at a place we used to ride brighouse park yeah that's <laughs> like, so weird really <laughs> yeah they came to richmond yeah drop in it was with super t and romo and uh, season before it was season one i think oh wow yeah so like it was Darren so cool like, yeah to see like yeah. dylan like jumping off the three set of stairs that like oh dad that's the, that's the stairs yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. it's so awesome i know those stairs and like beside behind city hall and yeah. richmond and stuff 
Yeah, a lot of cool hits. Um, but one and, and jumps like secret jumps. If you knew where they were, like you'd find them in little patches of forest. Like okay. there's decent patches of forest in in Richmond if you know where to find them. Yeah, yeah. It's probably some dirt jumps now that we don't know I'm about. I'm sure there's dirt jumps. Yeah. But there's one place that stands out that was kind of like our Red Bull rampage, and it was called the Sand Piles. And if anybody's listening and knows what I'm talking about, they know that it's a legendary spot. It's super legendary. It was a preloading. Uh, sand pile so you know like preloading is like when you know construction companies have to just wait uh, a plot of land and so that they can later put a whole bunch of like you know lumber and steel or whatever and build a building and in Richmond it's silt it's you know we're just we're like our we're the end of a delta so yeah. the the island is is not very strong so you're literally below sea level like you said yeah yeah um so there's tons of these preloading spots, uh, just piles of sand everywhere. But, you know, your average pile of sand, you can't ride that. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, the mixture of sand and dirt in this one spot was so prime for building and riding. Every every angle you looked at this thing, there was a drop or a ledge or a step up, step down. It was so fun. It was like our oh, outlet big. for creativity yeah. at the time. and feeding off each other and seeing like other people do like crazy road gaps and stuff like it was insane it's a big so, so a lot of people knew about it not just you guys like it was built by a bunch of different people all the hits yeah and stuff. Yeah. yeah 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 oh wow. uh, and it was so legendary it was so awesome like i wish i could go back to that and yeah, like, build some time. stuff now yeah yeah uh fortunate or unfortunately it eventually got shut down they put a fence around it because yeah. it was like super dangerous <laughs> and like <laughs> just kids building all fun stuff big someone and, yeah Someone tore down like a shed and then built a wall ride out of the shed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you do as a kid, you know. Right. Where yeah. else are you gonna get wall oh, ride materials? Wow. <laughs> That's cool. But yeah. So it was so sick. How long did it take for you guys to go from from there to the shore to the first bike park? Like when did you ride your first bike park? Well it yeah. For yeah, me. it would have been Whistler for me too. Yeah. I think I think I got a full suspension and I was like, okay, now I can go ride Whistler. Cause I, I was you know, when you just like build it up in your head, you're like, I can't ride it. What's wrong with a hardtail? Like, it's just gonna got a line and I got it. That's too big. So I got to save up enough money, bought a full suspension, never had ridden a full suspension, hit that first jump under the chairlift on a, like as you do, because a line's the first trail you have to hit when you go to Whistler. No business on that trail. Still had the orange cones. Still had the orange, <laughs> like, yeah, it was like OG a line. Hit that first jump and nose dove so hard and just, because I didn't know what a back shock was. Oh, it was no. like, Boom! Crash! Tumble, tumble, tumble! Oh, you went over the bars! Oh yeah! Like instantly, I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> so much pain. This isn't like the videos. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Drop and lied." <laughs> it looked so easy. Uh, but then I rode the rest of the trail and cased every jump, and you know, like as you do, and yeah. So that must have been that would have been like 2007, probably. Yeah. And uh, but I don't think we rode. Whistler together for even a couple years after that. No, probably not. Yeah. I don't, I don't even remember. I was fortunate, very fortunate to basically ride the coattails of my dad. You know, I was just going through the motions of like, he wanted to go riding. So I would just go with him. He's like, we're going riding. So yeah. whether it was the shore, you know, another, another CBC lap or, you were or going ride. to Whistler. I think that even he at the time, like I, I'd be curious to ask him how he caught wind of Whistler and, and there being a bike park there because I think he was just kind of like, yeah, apparently there's a bike park. Let's yeah. go. Mm -hmm. But it was so long ago, I I have no memory of it. Yeah. Sadly. Huh. Well, what about, like, the first time I think I heard of you guys was, like, I only ride park video. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And oh, well. how many, like, how many videos you had you done before that? Like, was that early in, in your career or how? No, no. I wouldn't say. I think that was, no. like, 2012, 2013 that was like or something. Two, yeah, so maybe we had oh, been I must have heard like you guys before that. Three, four years yeah, no, I must have heard you before then, though. But that's the one we're thinking now. That's what I remember from back in the day. I mean, that's when you would have known us for making funny bike stuff. But yeah. at that time, I had, I had been working with NSMB right. uh, as their right. full-time videographer that's how, yeah. from 2010. Yeah, I knew you before that. Yeah, and, and then, then I did, like, a Rocky job early yeah. on. And I probably met you through there, too. Yeah, but. yeah, probably. Yeah. Because that video, I remember, was quite funny. And then it's still, like... People still have those stickers everywhere. Oh, and, yeah. yeah, it's well, a thing. Speaking it still stickers, lives. I brought you some stickers, mandatory stickers. Oh, Ooh. how tacky. <laughs> I, uh, I had to uh, yeah. <laughs> I had to bring you. I don't know if I've ever given you, given you stickers. No, so, I never have. There's finally. some eye on the right Finally, parts. I'm in the cool club. Yeah, there the cool you go. Richmond guys. Yeah. 
Oh, sick. I expect to see that. Mahalo, my dude. Like I like Red Park. In the video. Send it, buddy. <laughs> That right. shred with the Shrek logos. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. Brap to the future. <laughs> oh, I love it, Norman. We're still long, the, yeah, we, we really are great. kids at heart. Just uh, yeah, having Very fun, nice. making videos, biking, making yeah, making art. Just yeah, you know, so cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll creative. stick these in my my man cave. I'll stick these right in my trash. In your what? In my <laughs> man cave. Um, <laughs> so that video was was quite funny. Was that the first video that? Like, you've, you've been producing videos for NSMB. I remember that now, actually. And I think I met you up at the Air Apprentice, up at Silver Star. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You probably yeah, met yeah, Jay and I there. Yeah. 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 We were so we young. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, I think we uh, paid them to shoot that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it worked back then. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> I yeah, I don't we got paid in, like, juice boxes and pixie sticks or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, at least some. <laughs> yeah, I did some, uh, like, uh, announcing for them to help out and whatnot. And, uh I think I, uh, I think I, I mean, Justin Wiper and I had a slap fight. Oh yeah, yes. oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, we were young, man. We were like nine, like maybe no. Were we nineteen or twenty? No, 20? I think we were like eighteen or something. That's where I met you guys. Yeah, and yeah. we're like at the bar, and you guys are slapping each other. Everybody's yeah, yeah. getting wasted, throwing darts at each other, and yeah, we're yeah, like. Yeah. Mountain biking's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. I know. We beat. <laughs> I, I was on stage and I was like, oh, and uh, a fresh, a new pair of socks here goes to uh, Justin Wiper. And it looks like you also want a free slap. He's like, what? You want a free slap? And he's like, I, I don't, I go slap me. And he's like, what? I go hit me. And he's like, I, I, I go like this, whack! And I slapped him, and then whack, he slaps me back <laughs> on stage. I, I might have footage of that still. I bet you do. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, and then the, later that night, we just would randomly walk each other and like nod and then like slap each other a couple times really hard and then go our way, you know? <laughs> People <laughs> around you. would be like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and then I met you guys again um, up at Whistler, and I was coaching for Camp of Champions, and uh, me and Dorfling hit this drop off the backside of where the Blackcomb Staff Comb buildings are down towards the river. And I think you filmed it. Oh. And it was like, yeah, it was about like a 15 foot drop, maybe. For 18. what project? Uh, was it a... What was it for? It was for. Um, it was a Deep Summer or something like that? or? A... Yeah, I think it was Deep Summer. Uh, and I was shooting it. Yeah. Lawrence? For, uh, Lawrence Crossman M's? No. 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 Was it Margus? I think it was maybe for Margus. Uh, I don't know. For Marcus Riga. And then, because we got, we got second in the in the photo sh contest. But. I've definitely shot you doing some gnarly things, though. I've, yeah. I've been able to have that privilege of uh, <laughs> also being one of those people looking up at the top of the hill going, are you sure, Tippy? Yeah, right. <laughs> really? I know. Well, it was kind of sketchy because it jumped into like a gravel pit and there was like a V valley and it was blind and there was a stump. And so I was airing off the stump and it's like a 10 foot wall. And then you air down the tranny, like five to eight feet down the tranny. So you're dropping about 18 feet. Which is still pretty big, you know, it's like not rampage big, but still pretty big. Mm -hmm. And I felt all cool. And then Dorfling hit it and then he's like, I'm gonna try it off the side. Then he came from the other side and aired into it and he dropped about 22, 23 feet. Uh, and I was like, oh, Dorfling. <laughs> <laughs> you filmed it. I don't know if that was me. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. that, that was the second time I go. Oh, there's a lot of videos between then and now. So. Yeah, well, we're for both of us, yeah. right? Seriously. Like, how many videos have we all done here? If you put them all together... Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. It yeah. would be, like, a uh, lifetime of video. It would be, like, 3,000 or something like that. 4,000, yeah. yeah, I don't exactly. know. exactly. Yeah, carry the two. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot. Yeah. Um, so, I, I have a funny story about Alan Wright Park, though. And oh. the, 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 yeah. The genesis of that. Okay, tell us about that. Um... Mm -hmm. So I knew that I wananted to make I had I I'm faster than you had that already yeah, come out Yeah I'm faster than you okay. it was like our first mountain bike music video that it went big like it was super popular so yeah. we were like what what can we make like what's next Yeah and the whole the whole premise of, premise of that one was I uh, kind of felt like mountain biking at the time was taking itself very seriously like all the videos were like I don't know lots of like slow mo and like cool as possible and like yeah yeah just yeah. seriousness i don't know i kind of just felt like oh let's just like make fun of all this stuff like this is in my nature to like want to make fun of stuff in daily life and be like oh that could be a sketch you know right right so uh yeah i wanted to just make fun of the people who just are all about their performance and being faster than you so that was a big success and then i think you know we were big park rats so we felt like there was something to do with bike parks and coming back from a photo shoot with Thomas Vanderham, 
I was in his passenger seat, star starstruck little boy, <laughs> <laughs> getting a ride from Thomas Vanderham. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. And I told him, uh, yeah, I want to make a music video and like, I want to do it on bike parks, but like, I don't really know. I need like a hook or something. He's like, how about I only ride park? <laughs> I was like, don't be surprised if I use that. So Vanderham came up with that. Vanderham came up with it. <laughs> yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah. He should have trademarked it. Right. <laughs> so we've taken yeah, it. Yeah, it's not in here, Matt. I'm, 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 but I'm giving him his flowers now because uh, that the was the genesis. Yeah. 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 I'll give him some stickers. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, uh, that was the genesis of the idea. You got to take these ones back. <laughs> <laughs> not these ones. I like these ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just went out there and did it. And it was the same kind of thing. It was a success. It was kind of the same same realm of I'm faster than you. And people loved it. And yeah. Still to this day, like kids and adults say to me, you're the Island the Ride Park guy. Like it'll be like 10 year old kids that you're the Island the Ride Park kid. And I'm like, how is that still in the algorithm for them? Right. How are they finding yeah. it? Like, right. what? I'm so curious. I want to ask them questions. Like, how do you know me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, tell me. I need but to learn. But I made 2,900 other videos. Why do you know me from this video? <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> really. Oh, that's that's a testament to you know the power of that of that video because it it hit a, it hit a nerve with people. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of park rats out there that only do ride parts, so they can totally relate. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it was it was like it was us being. Like making something about our privilege of riding the chairlifts and being spoiled brats as young kids and having the option of a chairlift, which right. you didn't have the option. No, back in the day. Oh no, there was no, like they laughed at us when we suggested we put mountain bikes on the chairlift. Exactly. They're like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, no, it'd be really cool. And now kids growing up with the e-bikes, I see like eight-year-old kids with an e-bike. I'm like, oh. I know I'm crusty. I'm like, oh, this is how the adults felt when we were kids riding the chairlift. Right. Now yeah. I'm grumpy at the younger right. uh, Gen Z yeah, yeah, exactly. riding the e-bikes. And then the e-bikes one day will be like looking at someone with like a, uh, you know, Star Wars transporter yeah. or something like. Damn kids in their hover bikes. Yeah, they VR. They don't even have yeah. to leave the house. <laughs> Damn hover bikes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holographic hover bikes. Yeah, right. Yeah. The <laughs> virtual reality. Yeah. They'll just sit there and yeah. be like riding aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was sick. Yeah. Mountain Dew. <laughs> I only do virtual reality. <laughs> yeah. I only VR. <laughs> trademark oh. <or> trademark. <laughs> so did that video like uh, start putting some money in your pocket? Like, because like, they got big numbers and, you know, they, they say that YouTube themselves will pay you, but then other sponsors will want to be a part of your next video once you, you know, crack some big numbers like that. Like. Did that, did that uh, get things rolling? I think, we, I think we were making money before that on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like... Literally tens of dollars. Yeah, it wasn't anything crazy. <laughs> in a row. Yeah, in a row. <laughs> yeah. It, it, especially, like, we were so young, I, I don't think we were, like, realizing that this is a business no. opportunity. Right? No, our like, name was I fucking hate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> no clue. Yeah, yeah right. no clue. So, it's like, so obvious. There was no... waste time. We weren't taking, it, like, advantage of and, like, seeking out that sponsorship or, like, I like for Island Ride Park and I'm fasting, I remember just, like, asking friends for, like, apparel and stuff, right? Like, even though we're wearing massive billboards on us and yeah. millions of views video. Right. We're just like, uh, how do we get, how do we get a Fox jersey? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Do you know anyone with a Fox jersey? And, like, kind of just crowdsourcing it all and being really gorilla about it. But we just wanted... We got turned cool down. Stuff. We got we asked Troy Lee for some jerseys for that video, and they said no. And then we're like, "Damn it!" And then Sombrio pulled through, and they gave us some jerseys, but they were so big on us. <laughs> yeah, so awkward. Oh, but yeah, yeah, no. I mean, th that was kind of like the golden days of like the ignorance of not really thinking about like the logos and like the like. Oh, would someone be willing to like help fund this thing? It was just like doing stuff completely for fun. All passion. The focus you know, was that's, just yeah. Let's yeah. make yeah. this funny thing and like as cheap as possible because we don't have money <laughs> ourselves to make it. So it's like, right. yeah. You need a little Richie Slay in your lives just to be like, okay, there's billboards with this worth this and this is worth this. Don't we all? The gloves this. <laughs> make sure the gla gloves match the goggles. There you go, yeah. <laughs> it was a weird world back then though, right? Because YouTube was so fresh and new that like there was a select few making good money off YouTube and making it their lives, but they weren't mountain bikers. They were like, comedians or like high-end filmmakers like mystery guitar man or yeah, like right these these people that you're like oh my god like, i can't be that but hey we can make our little mountain bike music videos and like <laughs> try and this the landscape has changed where now i think kids growing up are like i could be a youtuber growing up but right. back when we were coming we we're like 
Okay. We can't get yeah. Money I mean, we're still gunning for it. I mean, we're yeah. like, w- w- nowadays we're pretty focused on the mountain bike stuff. I mean, it's like, we've just come to realize this is what makes us the happiest. But back in the day, we were making a lot of broader stuff. Like we were making. Getting ske- outside the, the, into the mainstream. Yeah. yeah we were exactly. just making things that were topical, things that we thought were going to get shared, things that we thought like all families would enjoy or, you know, we might get posted on Reddit and yeah. go viral. Um, right. So, you know, that experience really helped us try to bring it to our mountain bike stuff. Cause it was like, okay, well we know all this inside knowledge of mountain bike stuff, but now how do we put the broad kind of universal spin on it to make it appeal to more, you know? And that's like, I'm faster than you. I know I park. Like it's that kind of those two things coming together. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, we had other viral hits, I think before that, and we were yeah. getting some money, like maybe we were like getting like thousand dollar checks or something like that. I don't know. And, uh, until our first big hit, we had like 10 million views on uh, a video and we had an $8,000 check on, on, on AdSense. And that was like a big game changer for us. Wow. What video was that? It was how to, or sorry, no, not how no, to. No, if Diablo three were a girl. Right? So yeah. there's a video game that, that was re- released after like a long, like 13 year wait. And, uh, it, there was a technical issue the day it came out and it kind of like was a flop more or less Okay. A technical flop. So we made fun of that within like 48 hours. We made a script and wrote a, uh, we produced a little sketch video and I acted in it. And uh, yeah, we went crazy and had half a million. There's so many gamers out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was number one on all of Reddit, I think, for for a full day. And it was just like insane. That was like the definition of viral. Yeah. And um, what did it get? Yeah, it was getting a million views. Yeah, it was getting half a million views a day, every single day for a week until it capped out around like 10 million or something like that. But wow. Yeah, it's, you know, people like, man, the frequent, most frequently asked question to us, especially back in the day was how much money do you make? How much are your yeah, ads yeah, worth? Yeah, yeah. And it was always like impossible to answer because it's not, it's not a formulaic thing. It has to do with the time of year, how much the ads are worth, what, kind of what, content it is. what your content is it's like impossible. But how like, big they are. The I, would, yeah. I always just chalked it up to like, oh, it's like a thousand bucks per million views. So like. If you're trying to become, you know, a professional YouTuber, like just use that as your kind of like benchmark. I don't even know if that's accurate, but still to this day, but well, like that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's you guys should make more than that. That's a lot of views, right? Yeah. That's so it helps. It's yeah. tough to do. That's it helps when tough. you have a backlog. Like if I get a hundred grand, I'm like very stoked to get if I get a hundred thousand views. Oh yeah. Oh, like anything. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. I that's yeah. all right. Another hundred thousand. Yeah, just throw it in the corner. Put it in my man cave. Right. <laughs> yeah. I need a pillow. But that the first million views though that we ever got was like that was very yeah, yeah very yeah. exciting for us and yeah you know and I think after that for years it was always like I think this one's gonna get a million views I think this one's gonna get a million views right. and it was like nope it didn't nope yeah. it didn't ah oh, shit That's nope it didn't and you know that was <laughs> hey we we kept at it we didn't let it get get us down because we had a little taste of. Of the success. Of so. the big time. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then lots of flops after that. Yeah, it's been all downhill. <laughs> but, you know, it's I, we, we've we never tried to box ourselves into the same thing. Like, even though people know us for these how to bees or old music videos. Yeah. We've always tried to do, like, random different things just to mix kind it of up. mix it up. Yeah. yeah. Never just always been focused on one concept, which a lot of YouTubers do. Well, you've done a bunch of different uh, uh, music videos I didn't know about until I kind of did a little more research. Like, I saw Wismas before, obviously, but I saw stuff like Time Zones and oh, Silver okay. Skies, Night Code, Quick Quick, Friends of Friends, and I don't know about those. I'm going to have to check them out later. But, well, those, uh, those are those are music videos that I directed for other artists in yeah. Vancouver. They're not us. It's not us. It's not comedy, actually. They're, no, but uh, you, yeah. you did the video for them, mm-hmm. so you were contracted out. To, to do yeah, it. yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And were any of them comedy or were they all quite no, like they're all just music videos, legit music videos, rap videos. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just like a it was an old dream of mine to be a music video director, and my friends you pursued did. art, uh, music, so yeah, it's a good so you did that. Yeah. Um, tell me about the sickest edit ever where you won the GoPro Dirt Diaries at Crank Works Whistler with Kyle Norbrayton as your star <laughs> and uh, Norby. It, the, 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 Norby, as I call him. The um, <laughs> shout out Norbs. The, uh, <laughs> the premise was awesome. I don't know if you asked me a this or that, Brett Tippy's laugh or Norb Norbs laugh. Oh, I would be split. Oh, he's got a good ringer. Oh yeah, no. it's very infectious. Okay, yeah. even in text messages, when he he doesn't just say give you an LOL, he gives you like three lines of ha ha has. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's really he's really funny. Oh yeah, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> or you know he's laughing. I made the class clap or laugh, and I made Kyle do a triple liner. <laughs> <laughs> triple liner on no the way. Text. <laughs> um, but in this edit, 
Whistler had been taken over by rollerbladers, off-road rollerbladers, I, I believe. And you're trying to get mountain biking back on the chairlift and back on the mountain. And you're going to do that by creating the sickest edit ever. Who wrote that? Whose idea was that? And um, tell me about making that video because it was, it was awesome. I feel like that was mostly you at that time. That was Kaz and I wrote that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, Jason, maybe you were working Rocky or something like that. I think that. I was working like a chump full-time desk job. And uh, <laughs> I know, I used to come in and give you like no yeah, slicks. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Jason worked a lot of uh, office jobs. He was had proper jobs and I kind of just always pursued video. I've, I kind of say I've never had a real job. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was always doing the video thing. And so, I, I'll, but still to the, like, since we started always trying to work on videos whenever we could. Yeah. Now we're full time doing it again. But, but you were working with Kaz at the time. Oh, so let's mention the other yeah. guys on the team. Like there's yeah. uh, David Wiggins, mm -hmm. uh, Kaz Yamamura, and uh, Brooke Taylor. Yeah, that's the full IFHT team. Like you guys are the co-founders, but you know you've got your crew of, of friends and, and 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 coworkers too, right? Yeah. And uh, so you're working with Kaz there to to make the sickest edit ever um, for the idea of it. Yeah. Uh, well, it was was that the. That must have been the second Dirt Diaries, right? Yeah, because you did the one with Ross first. Yeah, we did What I Do in Whistler. And oh, then you we, won on that one too? Yeah. 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 So we've done, it, we've, what, we've done really... it three times and won three times. You've done it four times and won three times. No, I've done it three times and won all three the times. The fourth time was when, didn't you? Oh, no, you helped out with someone, but it wasn't your project on the last oh, one. Oh, Cass where we won. did it? Because mm, weren't you involved like, in the very last one? Mm, I don't know. I can't remember. The Cavs did one, but yeah. I, I just gave him a shirt or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I yeah. thought you were involved Produced in that. It. No, no, no. I'm, I will proudly I, say I've entered three and I've won three. Oh, yeah. damn it. Because I was like, you know, I've entered four times and I've won once. and But I beat AF, IFHD. <laughs> no. But you were three for three, maybe. It was just Cavs. Okay. I, I love that event, by the way. It's so fun. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we need more of those. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was what I missed about crank, uh, not having crank works. I feel like we should just have our own. Yeah. Well, we do. We have, we do have our own, the sick edit challenge. Yeah, we do a right. sick edit challenge. Which is actually kind of an inspiration from the sickest edit ever. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. So how do you do this? How do people so, join? Well, let me, let me tell you a quick story about yeah. the sickest edit ever. Oh yeah. That's what I wanted so, to do. So, so Kaz and I, we were trying to come up with a concept and there was, maybe you can help me, Jason. There was a film that had come out. It was, a. Uh, it was the oh, same kind of thing where um, was, there was like a kung fu guy, but it was like was very '90s inspired. Oh, I don't know. Um, I feel like we got. Uh, yeah, I got to give flowers to, to that because yeah, we were kind of doing like a, a remix parody of a film that had come out and did really well. And it, it was this whole like, yeah, it was like uh, a short film, action film, hero kind of film. Uh, and um, yeah, I guess Norbs had asked us to be a part of it. We were just racking our brain for concepts. And I remember I remember literally writing that script until the sun came up with Kaz. Yeah, we were writing till 6 a.m. And we were like so That's pain. you do your best work, right? <laughs> yeah. I can't Sometimes. do it. I can't do it like the way I used to do it. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's when the best work happens. Um, yeah, we... I don't know. We just came up with this crazy idea of like rollerbladers take over Whistler. And uh, I don't know. One thing leads to another. And we have, we're at like the thrift store buying nine pairs of rollerblades <laughs> and asking <laughs> friends and volunteers to come out. And Cam McCall makes a cameo. And I don't know. We probably shot it for like 10 days or something. We were. It must have been fun to make. Oh, uh, so it fun. It looked like it was fun. So mm -hmm. fun. And like we were sleeping at uh, our friend Ollie's place. And Ollie Jones? Uh, yeah, Ollie Jones. We need more roost. <laughs> the one Who also started it. Bro. Oh, yeah. yeah. Finally got bro. Yeah. And it was just so dank, like staying in his small little place at the time. And like Kaz and I are on the floor and then Norbs is outside in a tent because <laughs> it was just dank in there. And Norbs is like, I can't have it. I, I'm, I'm going to be outside. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It was so fun. Like those were the glory days of Whistler though, because now that like Vale took over, it's a little bit harder to like get up there when you, with your rollerblades only. But like <laughs> right. somehow we greased the wheels and we're like, Hey, can we just like get up here? Like, is it okay if these guys have rollerblades? And <laughs> yeah. Somehow they were just like, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking, that must have been fun because it looked like Whistler had been taken over by rollerblades. You made it look like it had happened and it was yeah. like it was like a nightmare. I Well, at the time, I think, oh, the, like, I think what we were really uh, interested in doing was just, like, we wanted to make a fake movie trailer for a movie that didn't exist and we wanted that to be our submission. We wanted people to be like, wait, what? Was that, 
was that it? Mm -hmm. Like, we wanted to kind of mind fuck people a little bit. Okay, so okay. It, it was fun to make a movie trailer that is the film. Right. So how long was it? Uh, I don't know, four or five minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I actually edited that in the back of an RV with my friends from another YouTube channel called High on Life. And it was like 35 degrees in the back of an RV. And I was editing that on a laptop and oh, my friend was doing voiceovers right. and it was like, yeah, yeah. But it all paid off. It was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that fans. was actually after the one with Ross Measures, What I Really Do in Whistler. Yeah. What I Do in Whistler, yeah. yeah and that I was his it. idea, Ross. Had was the it? idea of taking the meme, like what your mom thinks you do in Whistler, what your grandma thinks you do in right. Whistler, whatever. What your boss thinks you do. And yeah. It was brilliant. And yeah. uh, that was fun too. Yeah. And, yeah. So you won in those first two. And then I heard rumors of what you guys were doing, of something that you were doing with Michaela Gatto. And... No one would talk about it, but people are saying, oh, it's, I saw it, it's something going down and it's going to be wild. And like, <laughs> there was all these rumors and then you guys kept it pretty under wraps, you know, much respect for that. But when it finally hit that night, the audience was floored <laughs> and just all the acting and Michaela and the, the singing and dancing extravaganza of, <laughs> of everything that was in there was, was pretty amazing. That was a fun one. Um, yeah, super fun. Yeah. Um, and that, that was a parody of the song. Um, Kendrick Lamar's. Humble. It? Humble, right. Yeah. Humble, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Someone had sent me that video um, like a month before and they're like, you got to watch this. Like I have a couple friends who like they know when something comes out like, oh, Matt's going to love this. They send it to me. They're like, you got to watch this. And I know like certain people. I'm like, oh, OK, this is going to be good if they sent me something. <laughs> and I watched it. I was like, oh, my God, so good. And yeah, then I yeah. just, yeah, Michaela needed some help. And um, I actually was like overwhelmed at the time. I was like, I don't think I can do the Dirt Diaries again. I think I've won two. I'm like, I'm good. I'm going to retire. <laughs> yeah. And then like a week later, I'm like, oh, shit. But what if we parried Humble? What if we made a shot for shot remake? Yeah, yeah. And we kind of did like a female empowerment thing right now because it seemed like a right time for that. Like that was kind of like what we needed. Yeah. And, and it was, then one it thing was, leads to another. And then you guys pulled out the old uh, Marizoki girl outfits, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and you yeah. know, made a parody of that. Yeah. And, just, and Michaela can, she's super good energy on camera and like she's super talented. She can sing, she can rap, she can, anything that involves like a mic or a camera or something. She's yeah. pretty yeah, capable. She's so totally. yeah. yeah. So that was super fun too. I always yeah. did um, interviews with her when I was doing Crankworks videos because she would always speak well and she would just kind of like give me a, like a bullet point description of what I wanted and she'd cap it at the end. Like, as opposed to like such a grassy who'd go on for like three minutes, you know, for like, for a five minute video. <laughs> and you're like, can't even get the mic back from him, you know what I mean? She'd be like, but it, 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 the door horse is awesome. It's just got this and this and this and we're ready to go. And I was like, thank you very much, Michaela. And back to you. <laughs> it was always perfect. So when I saw her in this video, I was like, oh, that's good. That I remember good. being very disappointed the night that it premiered, though, because the sound was messed up. The speakers were messed up. So the whole thing was distorted. And like, yeah, it you know, weird. I was like so crushed. I was like, oh, my God, it sounded like garbage. And everybody's like, don't worry, don't worry. Like, my, like, Brooke was like, don't worry, it's fine. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like everybody loved it. I was like, oh, but they don't know what it's right. supposed to sound like. Yeah, oh. it, it's better than that. <laughs> that wasn't me. You know, honestly, that is my favorite part of doing those events is that you have the opportunity to just hear your uh, video on the huge speakers. Right. It's like, mm. it's so cool. Because in, especially in the sickest edit ever, at the end of it, I put a huge, like, <laughs> like, a, like a huge 808 bass. Yeah, that, yeah. When you're listening on your headphones or whatever, it doesn't hit the same. When you're at the when you're in the stadium, it's like right. when everybody's like, "Holy crap!" Right, <laughs> and you get everyone's reaction, just like being a class clown and yeah. making the class exactly. laugh. Right, exactly. there you go. You know, so I think there's thousands of people there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the evolution of that. So sick. Um, what about uh, some of these corporate videos you've been doing? You've been doing commercials and stuff, and. Are you allowed to make them funny? Like, you know, when you work for Trek and CBC and Scott and Red Bull and, you know, GT and, you know, like. I'd hope they hire us because they want them to be funny. <laughs> I don't think they go, we need a serious video. Get, get IFHT. Yeah, no, that never <laughs> happens. It's never happened? It never happens. Most of the emails that we've got over the years are like, hey, so we have this kind of weird idea. Someone came up with this wacky thing and the, the and someone said, oh, I know the guys for this. And then they email oh, okay. us. So <laughs> they know what they're getting, right? Yeah. yeah. It's always a start of a, it's always a bad idea that they send our way to try and yeah. flush out something. They're like, how about this? And we're like, that's really bad, but we'll take the inkling of that. 
that? <laughs> and how about this? And they're like, yes. We mix it with our own bad ideas. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's nice to have some input too, you know? Totally. Because yeah. totally. if you're going to make it, you might as well have a little, be, a little piece of it, you know? Yeah, I feel like we're yeah. in the position of like, if we're going to make something, like we, we want to put our stamp on it and our flavor in it and like enjoy making it. Right. right. Yeah. It's not to say that we don't, haven't made serious things. I mean, we're like, we've made plenty of things outside of our YouTube platform, but yeah, generally everything that you find on our channel is lighthearted or has some kind of realist realism to it. Like yeah. poking fun at real old, like regular day shit. Yeah. Yeah. What about the uh, mountain bike lifestyle channel? Um, your brother channel, Mahalo, my dude. Tell us about that. Yeah. I mean, that started <laughs> off way back as a, 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 like, yeah, a partner channel to IFHT. And it was kind of like this outlet of us making vlogs and more like riding content and more everyday stuff that wasn't BTS so, of our schedule. Yeah. Was well, that the one I was scenes. on for the opener with the, yes. the opener? Yes. Oh, yes. oh yeah. No, I will actually, you were on it when it was just the BTS channel. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was like, you're in a video called. Santa Claus crashes his mountain bike or something when, when we, we did our that Rocky ad. Oh yeah, Santa yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. And so yeah, it just started off as this like, like crappy little second channel like where we crappy, just like yeah, like, it just, like it's okay, just throw it there. Just, yeah, 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 like under the under the rug, just yeah. it's got to go somewhere. But then yeah, like we we started mountain like well Matt, you like took it in more of a mountain bike direction. I would say before that it was exactly that behind the scenes and just like whatever. And I feel like you, like I was kind of working at office jobs and you were in a place where like your life was morphing more into this mountain bike direction and you took it as more like lifestyle and storytelling. Well, the big event that happened. Instead of like crappy videos. Yeah, yeah. The big event that happened in my life was I had five mountain bikes stolen and uh, from my house and I basically didn't want to buy a bike. And I was like, maybe if I just point the camera at myself because I never I never considered that I could be in a video I always was you know self-deprecating in a bad way that like no one wants to see me ride like I'm not good enough like I'm not I'm not as good as the pros in the videos like I'm not I have no value uh and then I just decided like wait a second hold on that's I think there's no sense to that I'm just going to turn it around and just basically vlog like mm -hmm. Jason and I at the time were watching tons of YouTube vloggers vlogging about them drinking coffee or whatever I'm like, well, let's just show mountain biking. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I would, I think like the early days, I kind of documented the bikes getting stolen. And then like eventually that led to uh, Andrew Cho hooking me up with GT to give me a, fr a free mountain bike. After I, I didn't just get it right away. I had to make some videos and kind of prove my value there. <laughs> right, right. But uh, you got it. Without, st without those bikes being stolen, I probably would have never kind of turned that channel into a mountain bike channel. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the, the videos did so well. They were... I think it was a kind of a new, new ish thing at the time. Like, Super especially new. like we were doing Crankworks videos and instead of like the, you know, official media coverage, we were kind of just taking our, like taking the piss out of Crankworks, like in our own way, yeah. you know, like just making the best part. The best thing is just like sticking a camera in someone's face and just getting their reaction, you know, yeah. <laughs> like random hecklers rock people or people on the side of a race course. Something right. like that. And we just added our own spin and uh, they did really well. So then I'm like, Hey Jason, like this is, I think we could like just mountain bike and make a uh, focus in on this channel and just riding bikes. And so we changed the channel from IFHD vlogs to Matt Dennison to Matt and Jason. And then Jason took his job at pink bike. So then I was like, okay, well we should probably just change it to not have names in it. So we changed it to Mahalo, my dude. So it's timeless and anybody can be a part of it. Yeah, that, that's true. That's smart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Common so if you're a young, name. if you're a young kid listening and you have something that you think is just a hobby or you're not really serious <laughs> about it, second don't maybe consider a better name <laughs> yeah yeah don't second guess yourself make it a common denominator general thing yeah because you went on to work for rocky for mm -hmm. a while there like you're saying and then you worked for pink bike doing videos and whatnot and then you guys came back together or you you rejoined matt Yes, we're remarried now. Remarried, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> divorced and yeah, happily, happily married. <laughs> I, I, I saw a tan, uh, tan line there the, <laughs> on the ring. <laughs> Just barely tanned and then back on. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, what was it like working for, for Rocky and Pink Bike and being away from your original uh, passion here and, and being a desk jockey? And yeah, I mean, I like, I always, on camera host. I always had, I always had a job, like, 
back when I was like a legal 12 year old working at the keg in <laughs> Richmond that they just paid me under the table because I wasn't old enough to have like a working oh, no license. Way. And because I, I had to afford bikes, <laughs> like my, my parents were like, we're not buying you mountain bikes. This is the stupidest thing ever. Go play football. And I was like, no, 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 this is better. But I got to buy this stuff. So I always had a job. And I think that was like always my mindset. It's like always have to have a job. You just have to have a job, whether it's yeah working at the keg or baking or working at the bike shop and then going from the bike shop to the bike distributor and then getting the job at the bike brand like Rocky, working with people like yourself and Wade and, and Gully and being like, I made it. And then people would email me customers and they'd be like, Oh, I need bearings. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, oh, I made it. I made it. <laughs> Customer service, baby. It doesn't get any better than this. Like, <laughs> couldn't bear this any longer. I'm killing it. But then people, <laughs> you would come in and then just smack me all over the face. And I'd be like, that Brits, if you just smack me all over the face. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What's on your shoulder? <laughs> yeah. But that like, on the side though making videos still and kind of just trying to learn as much as i could as well about the bike industry and how the inner workings happened and how bikes get from manufacturers to bike shops to people and kind of like that side of things and applying that if i could to what we were doing and i think it definitely helps like knowing the behind the scenes on a lot of these and making the good connections and all that sort of stuff but yeah ended up getting a job working a pink bike working with you again and on camera stuff and i don't know it, it that was always the path but now i feel like this is just like this is a job <laughs> like back when we were kids like we were saying youtube was not a job there's no it didn't make sense but yeah. now it's like yeah yeah you know, are you, are you whatever you want our youtube was always a side gig yeah it was always yeah. like the hobby like matt worked at an smb filming videos but not time. Now, now now this is not now this is it now you're yeah. making millions of dollars. <laughs> millions, millions of cents. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dogecoin. Uh, yeah, do yeah, Bitcoin or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I think like uh it's a really sweet combo between Jason and I to, you know, I focused heavily on the video, so mm -hmm. I learned that inside out and I climbed that ladder of how to, you know, become a director and how to have a army and create a, a film and Jason learned the more of the inner workings of the the bike industry and also the bikes themselves. Yeah, <laughs> very yeah. talented bike mechanic and yeah, uh, and good and good camera on host too because you yeah. you are like a predominant actor in many of these productions. Yeah, I don't like to call myself. That. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be in front of the camera. Oh, uh, I always cut yourself short. Yeah, yeah but well, uh, Jason's got a face you can't forget in a good way. <laughs> face good radio. Way. <laughs> God, that guy's a beauty is in the eye of the beer holder. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we do pop. Wait, you're filming this. <laughs> cut the camera. But yeah, I mean that, that, that's how the video started it was just jason and i pointing the cameras at each other or pointing the camera or, or just setting it up and then running back in front of it and yeah. acting right right um <laughs> and then i don't know you come up with bigger ideas and then like it just you got to focus on the camera and you can't do both and i don't know yeah well it sounds like you're definitely having fun with it and all of it and every time i run you guys i always end up walking away with my face hurting it's like fine like these guys are Fun, you know so yeah, use more chapstick yeah i know as my <laughs> lips are split from being outside um i'm gonna ask you guys some random questions i did the rapid fire questions with you yesterday yeah oh that no. was so good that was the and, uh, best this or that on our podcast is that yet. the best one yet yeah, oh that was, yeah that was best so rapid fire funny yet. you were so torn <laughs> yeah you got so loud yeah it was so painful that those answers i was like i don't know what to i don't i honestly don't know <laughs> Um, Jason said you were racking your brain of every person you were going to offend if you said one thing or the other. I day. was. <laughs> I knew it. I, knew I was it. thinking. I was thinking. Marketing people, marketing people. Yes. Free pass here. Free lift tickets there. Ah! So <laughs> my wife going, why did you say this? <laughs> <laughs> something diplomatic would have been something like this. And I'll be like, ah. They cornered me. <laughs> <laughs> we gotcha. They ambushed me. <laughs> oh. Okay. If you had to describe yourself um, as a weather pattern. What's your forecast? <laughs> right now. Right now? Yeah. Oh, man. In life, in general. Oh, right now, tornado. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy, crazy times. Yeah, tornado. Yeah, I don't know. Just like rain and sun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like a oh, body with sunny periods. Yeah, there's some rain coming in, but then it clears and there's some sun. And That's rain's life in general. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I can't even think of more than two weather patterns. <laughs> yeah. Like. 
<laughs> it's either rainy or sunny here, right? What's the weirdest thing in your fridge right now? The bomb hot sauce. Oh, that is weird. The bomb. Is that mm-hmm. super hot? Yeah, it's from Hot Ones. It's uh. How many? Oh, I should have brought it here. We all should have done a little dab. Oh my god. Uh, it, oh, I don't know, man. It, it's it's terrible. Right. Like tongue Painful. tongue melting. Terrible. Yeah. The reason I have it is because. Oh, sorry, I'm, you want to? No, no, no. I still think. The reason I have it is because <laughs> we did a video called the Har- Har- hardest skinny on the North Shore, and we rode the. You might remember it. The there's like a skinny on Pangor that kind of has like a curve in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A low one. Mm-hmm, yeah. Super low, and uh, I oh, I can't spoiler it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't really... Spo- You'll have this, to watch this, to this find one, out. This the hot out. sauce plays a part. When's it out? This one's out in a week. Or two weeks. This will be out in two weeks. Okay, video would be out... Oh, then it might be out... It might like, be out the same around week this or something time. Like that. Yeah. 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 But anyways, the uh, loser, whoever whoever couldn't do the skinny, had to consume the hot sauce. Oh, okay. on the train, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. The bomb. Yeah, the bomb. Okay. But what's the weirdest thing in your fridge? I can't think of the weird... The bet... Like, the most... The coolest thing in my fridge <laughs> is uh, I still have... I, I went to Quebec last summer, and I bought so much maple syrup that I, I, I have a lot of it in my fridge still, and I, I consume Why a lot. Why did you get maple syrup? It's the same everywhere you it's go. Not, it's different. There's what? like Yeah, there's like little, like, uh, what would you, like micro breweries of maple syrup. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you got some special ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got some special what, what you, sauce. What are you packing? I, it's in French. I can't. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Love maple syrup. I feel like they all just say 100% maple syrup, though. But there's grades. It's, there's like grade A, grade B, grade oh. C, and then like the coloring. Oh, it's a, yeah. I got some good stuff in there, though. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, educated man. <laughs> okay. Next question. What fictional character would you want by your side during a zombie apocalypse? You can have any fictional character oh, beside you. Um, like, what's his name? Rick from uh, The Walking Dead? He seems like a good guy to have. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking cartoons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. What Rick? Rick, that's his name, right? Yeah, Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. Yeah, that's yeah. a great answer. Did he answer. die? <laughs> Does he die? <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change my answer. No, I think his job is to literally like, kill uh, zombies, so that's my answer. That was so quick. How did you think of that? I just thought of zombies, uh, people yeah. who kill zombies. Right, experience. He's got experience. Good, good in the resume. Yeah. yeah. I feel like just Bill Murray. That'd <laughs> <laughs> be great. Because you'll just rewind the clock and wake up in the morning. And... Yeah. I just want to meet Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Whether I die by zombie apocalypse or not. Yeah, I, yeah, I, cool. I met Bill Murray. I yeah. can go. Yeah, just a bucket, happy. bucket list item for you before you die. Definitely. <laughs> before you get your spleen eaten. Uh, okay, next question. A genie appears and grants you a wish for someone else in the world. <laughs> Who and what do you make a wish for? For someone else. What, what, oh, make a wish for someone else. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Who are you going to give a wish to? I'm going to... Oh, you have to give the wish. Yeah, you, you don't get, get it for yourself. You do, get, you, do you get to decide what the wish is? Um, go grant you a wish for someone else in the world. I'll buy a... Yeah, yeah, you, you make the wish up for somebody else. Oh, okay, cool. I wish Brett Tippy would give me a million dollars. <laughs> God damn it. That was too low. I did, yeah. Like 10 million. <laughs> that's that's nothing. <laughs> I got Monopoly. I, I, had the, I had the wholesome answer, but that was the that was the smart answer. I, I was going to... I'll buy my uh, my mom a vacation house in Hawaii. Or just a home in Hawaii. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Aw, I'm wholesome. so selfish. <laughs> <laughs> and I chose such a low number. Now. I know. Why do I get a million? Yeah. This is a wish. Go for like... You know, yeah, so I can get one like a one bedroom dollars. condo. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, you'll yeah. get one bedroom condo that has a leaky roof. Yeah. <laughs> oh. If you could go back in time ten thousand years, and make a cave painting to confuse everyone in the future, what would you draw? <laughs> Probably like this bone shaka. <laughs> Maybe. Right. Like just I don't know if they were doing that back in the caveman days. Yeah. That was the original way. Uh but yeah, that seems fun. Just to make that a thing, like back in the year. Yeah. That'd be uh, good. One. Yeah. I don't know if it would confuse them though. But they'd be throwing yeah, shakas, beautiful. so that's kinda cool. Yeah, for the last ten thousand years. Uh, yeah, I feel like I would just do like 
an eggplant emoji or something. <laughs> <laughs> like an emoji? Yeah, just an, emo- an eggplant emoji. Yeah, an egg- oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, maybe we should have said like a portrait of yourself. So then like they think you're a god, you know, or hey. something. You're like a prophet or something. Yeah. Right, eh? He's here! <laughs> Jason <laughs> yeah. Lucas! Oh, it's pronounced Jason. <laughs> uh, Hassan? <laughs> yeah, we'll called- just, just song <laughs> Lucas! Oh, God. It's French caveman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh... If buying groceries was a game, what would be one of the loading screen tips? Oh, okay. Um, oh. Uh, don't shop when you're hungry. <laughs> Dang Ooh. on. Yeah. The best stuff is on the rim of the store. So the, the entire perimeter. Oh, you guys are brilliant. Fruits, meats, bakery. Good point. Dairy. And, and make a list too, because like when you go there, you just like start looking at stuff. And also, don't go to Whole Foods. Whole Foods has like the best clickbait on the shelves, man. You go there, you're like, I want everything. Everything yeah. is so delicious. <laughs> then you get you, you put it in your fridge, then you will end up getting a tan from the light inside your refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, um, what are two of your favorite snacks? Two snacks? Yeah. What are your favorite cereal? Two snacks? Like, uh, primarily, um, recently I've been on a big leap and lemurs tip. Oh, <laughs> they're, ba- lemurs. they're basically Reese's pieces cereal. Oh my God. That's like maybe a little bit healthier or something. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> it's like that. It's like the kind of health looking brand, you know? Yeah. It's like the logo is made of bamboo. So it looks healthy or oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's one. And then, uh, I've also been pretty obsessed with, uh, I love ice cream. So yeah. Yeah. La Glace ice cream is my latest obsession in uh, Vancouver. Which one? La Glace ice cream. Okay. Yeah, they had a blue Sounds mini. Sounds expensive. <laughs> uh, ah, it's no, no, uh, not normal. Normal. Oh, okay. Maybe even like, maybe a little bit competitive compared to the other uh, okay. ice creameries around here. Yeah. But yeah, cereal and ice, cereal and ice cream for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm seven. Have you ever <laughs> mixed them? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, actually, one of my uh, flavors that I had recently was called cereal milk. Okay. So they mixed it for me. <laughs> this is an v- idea for a video. There's, this is going to be a far piece of something. <laughs> cereal <laughs> milk. <laughs> Come on, Jason. What, what is it now? I, 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 I can tell you. I used to do ice cream with scoops of peanut butter with milk with uh, chocolate syrup on it. Oh, boy. That's oh, nice delicious. And then and by the end, you just mix it up. And it was just like, oh. Yeah. Okay, go. This is a snack. Jason? I'm also, yeah, I love ice cream for sure. Like, but I'm also like, I'll go for the dirty stuff. Like <laughs> Dairy Queen blizzards. Uh, like Lucerin sometimes. You know, Lucerin ice Lucerin. cream. Luceringes? Yeah, Lucerin. That sounds very dirty. Uh, ben and Jerry's. Huge fan of those guys. And Both great dudes. Uh, yeah, both great. Yeah. Uh, favorite, favorite, favorite flavor of ice cream though? We need specifics the here. The Tonight Dough. Jimmy Fallon's Ben and Jerry's. That's Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one, I'm in hard on the veggie straws. It's a healthy snack, oh, they yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> they're just little square tubes that are made of vegetables, and they're deep fried, so they're healthy. I feel like you eat very like, simple, though. I always just eat, see, I feel like your favorite snacks are trail mix. You're always eating trail mix. Well, I, I like efficient snacks. Yeah. So, true. like, I, I'm, I'm the opposite. Snacks. <laughs> I'm like, what's this? I need calories. Like, I, like, no. w- yeah. like when we when we uh, go camping or bike packing or something like that, I want to go crazy with my meals, and then Jason wants to just eat, yeah, the space space meals or right, whatever they're right, called, yeah. you know? Yeah. High efficiency. Yeah. I need efficient. You it's not what? a snack, but I feel like you love uh, sp- spaghetti, too. I feel like you're a huge spaghetti guy. I would just pass it in general. Okay. Yeah. I almost forgot the most oh. important question. Our sponsor. Okay. It's time for the Ride Rap Crash of Your Life story. Oh. What was oh, yeah. the gnarliest crash of your life, and what was the gnarliest crash of your life? Brought to you by Ride Rap. Shout out to Ride Rap. I installed it for the first time on my bike, and nice. it was fun. Um... I'll go first. Mine's on the internet. <laughs> oh, right. no, yeah, that's probably not the narrative, but it, like visually, it's uh, I broke my ankle at the Panorama BC Champs. Yeah. Uh, like 2018, I think. Okay. And uh, was I announcing? You were there. Yeah. I think you were announcing. Yeah. And um, I didn't see that though. It was just on a practice run. I was going to race the event and we were filming. The, we were filming it, I think, right? We were like, we were doing the coverage for it. Well, we, it was, we were going to race. We were going to race. Yeah. It, I don't know. We were. It was the early days of just, let's just go and make a video. This is early, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, let's see what happens. Yeah. And and it was, I think the, the whole hook of the video was our first race. Yes. So I was GoProing Jason. I was behind you on a yeah. practice lap. Yeah, on a practice lap on the course there. It's super gnarly. It's like, 
and I think I was on an enduro bike. I was like, what am I doing? And uh, uh, was it the dollar sign? Yeah, uh, right above the dollar sign. It oh, wasn't okay. that that move. The yeah. cliffs of cliffs of, of insanity. Of insanity. Yeah, that yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty gnarly. It's pretty steep, and you're it's you're, aptly named. You get moving. Yeah, yeah. And so something went wrong, and I had to stick a foot out on the cliffs of insanity, and my foot got caught in a rock, and it just went whoosh, flipped it right one eighty. And then I crashed and tumbled and gross. Yeah, it was gross. And uh, I saw as I was flipping through the air, I saw a red shirt. And I was like, medic. <laughs> Come <laughs> like, on. Yeah. And, and there was like literally a marshal right there. And they're Instantaneously. Like, they're like, yep, ambulance now. Like kind of it all happened super quick. But um, just visually seeing your foot backwards is like, oh, great. This is going to be a process. Like, right, yeah. <laughs> it's not just like I fell and I can just dust myself off. Right. Like, this is going to be months. <laughs> yeah. This is going to take me a while. Yeah. yeah. My foot doesn't point that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that was, yeah, it was a gnarly recovery and all that. You said you were like a champ though, because you were so calm the whole time. Like, despite you having the laughing gas, you were calm. And that's like, it, the video is on our channel. On yeah, you can watch dude. it online. Oh, really? You, there's yeah. a video of uh, us doing commentary to the video and what's it called how can people find it oh. on youtube i broke my i think i broke, I broke my, my ankle mountain biking yeah <laughs> oh yeah. that's pretty easy yeah <laughs> a bracket graphic yeah <laughs> oh, okay yeah and then the thumbnail Check is like out, a everybody. disgusting broken ankle but yeah. you took like a champ and still to this day i'm trying to find the image so we can show you yeah, um, what about you matt uh probably the gnarliest crash that i had was in at the end of, in the summer after grade seven. So I was going into high school. I was all excited. Like high school was like a couple, a couple weeks away. I uh, was in Whistler by the skate park. There was like, we called them the trials areas. There was like teeter totters and wall rides and little drops and stuff like a skills area. Yeah. And I went off a teeter totter and I wanted to wheelie drop off the end of it before it went down okay. and just huck it. Yeah. And I just completely went over the bars straight to my face. Like I think my hand, my hands were still on the grips. My dad was on the side watching me and I went straight to my face and I broke my front tooth. So I have a fake tooth. Uh, and I got, I needed 14 stitches inside my lower lip. Okay. And so they had to scrub it out with, uh, you know, the gnarly medical brush. Yeah. yeah. I had a t terrible concussion and I haven't been the same since Tippy. I wonder what you would have been like before. You might have been really funny before that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. could have been? I yeah, actually... I <laughs> I, I'm a lot more funny looking now, but I, uh, I I started to think about that the other day. I was like, I wonder if I legitimately am different after that because that was a heavy one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, I've always wondered that myself, too. Like, maybe I was would have been really funny and, you know. And then you're like, what was I thinking about? Yeah. No, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Move along. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it was, it's between that one and the time I uh, cut my testicle on uh, Goat's Gully. But uh, I already answered, so I can't go much into that one anymore. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's... Could put some ride wrap on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to ride wrap. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to wrap things up here. But before we go. Oh, God. It's a custom here on the Bread TV podcast for people to have a dad joke. Have you got a dad joke for us? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Did you write yours? Yes. Okay, so Tippy, I told you yesterday that I cracked my first bone. Yeah. And I was in the ER, and you were asking me about being on the podcast and stuff, and I knew that you had jokes, and I was like, ah, oh, okay, I gotta write a joke. So I wrote, I wrote a joke for you. Okay. You wanna go first or me? I, I'm, I gotta read mine. You have ones okay. off the dome, right? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Uh, okay, so um, I was at the doctor's the other day, and he said, yeah, it's, it's perfectly normal to get an erection during a rectal exam. Uh, but I really wish he wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's I read it. that one on Reddit. <laughs> no. It's no? Like, it's like the guy, the guy that went in for an exam and the doctor says, I'm afraid you have to stop masturbating. And he's like, what? Why? I love masturbating. Why? And he goes, well, I have to examine you first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're the best jokes. Wait, there's another masturbating doctor. <laughs> uh, oh, God, tennis game, tennis game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my doctor said... Uh, my, I had a great visit at my doctor the other day. What did he say? Uh, he said, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, he'll work on it. Okay. Okay, okay here's mine. Ass. I'm going to read mine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> it's literally just a note called Tippy Joke. <laughs> a cowboy visits a farm looking to buy an animal to ride across the country on a journey of a lifetime. The cowboy says to the farmer, howdy there, partner. Would you sell me one of your pigs? 
I'm going to ride it across the country. The farmer says, oh, I... See, the farmer says, no, I can't sell you a pig, sir. You won't make it one mile from this farm with a saddle on a pig. How about I sell you one of men, my many fine horses? The cowboy replies, not much of a horse guy. How about that other pig over there? I'll pay you a triple for it. The farmer says, I can't sell you a pig, sir. You'll crush its spine. May I interest you in a donkey? I'll give you a good deal. The cowboy says, pig or nothing. The farmer sighs, says, what's the matter with you? I thought cowboys were supposed to ride horses. The cowboy turns and he says... I only ride pork. Oh, my God. <laughs> Finally, I get to say my pork joke. I should have memorized it, though. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I only ride pork. <laughs> it's so funny. I had to come up with the punchline and then work backwards. You know? Right, right. Yeah, I like that. Brooke was with me, and she was real annoyed because I was trying to memorize it, and I was yeah. saying it out loud in the ER like four <laughs> times, and I couldn't get it. I was like, I'll just read it. <laughs> uh, Did you remember your joke? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, two friends are talking. One guy says, things have been going really well since my doctor said I can masturbate whenever I want. And the other friend says, well, what do you mean? What did he say? He says, well, he said I could have a stroke at any time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the parental rating yeah. just went up. <laughs> I love masturbating in the shower, but people in the Home Depot store hate when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why you wouldn't go to the Home Depot last weekend. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Well, um, that's a wrap now that we've like just ended my career. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's okay. We got openings at iFish D Films. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We need uh, coffee holders. <laughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll be sitting there doing warranties on uh, people's like um, <laughs> different program videos or whatnot. Yeah, something like in the future. Yeah, exactly. You know, Ho hoverboard uh, <laughs> warranties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having thanks, us. Thanks, Tippy. That was yeah, a good laugh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, continue making the awesome content and, uh, you know, crushing it and making people laugh and making people happy and keep having a good time yourself. For sure. Yeah, we'll see you out there. Thank you. Thank you. I have HD. Yeah, you know me. Or you know the <laughs> IFHD. There we go. Thanks, guys. What does it stand for? I fart hard, though. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. <laughs>